As for Mizzou football, yesterday marked a lot of milestones for the Tigers, but perhaps the biggest was Drew Locke not only breaking Chase Daniels' single-season touchdown pass record, but the SEC record as well. After the game, Locke seemed more excited about the win itself than any records. Whereas Coach Riley used to sit this bench alone and walk this out-of-bounds line alone, now his son joins him, following in his footsteps. And the Chiefs hosted the Bills this afternoon. Tyrod Taylor back in the starting lineup for the Bills as they look to get a win in a tougher environment down at Arrowhead. With the NCAA tournament approaching, Mizzou Volleyball only has three matches left in its regular season. Luckily for the Tigers, all three are at home starting this afternoon as Mizzou welcomed Arkansas to the Hearn Center. The number 16 ranked Columbia College women's basketball team traveled a few blocks to take on the Stevens College Stars. American Midwest Conference Showdown. Mizzou football back in action at home today after a road victory over the Yukon Huskies. Tigers looking for their first SEC win of the season over the Florida Gators and some leadership changes within the Florida coaching staff possibly helping the Tigers get it done. Randy Shannon at the helm today. After the firing of Jim McElwain and the Gators troubled Drew Locke early. Locke looking to the end zone. Bad pass toward double coverage. Picked off Mizzou once again with a disappointing first drive. Second drive also stopped. Petoni ball high and scraping the clouds, and it is muffed. Anthony Sherrills recovers the ball, and the Tigers are in business. And Locke capitalizes, throws into single coverage this time, and a great catch by Kendall Blanton for the five-yard touchdown. Tigers up 7-0. Take another look here. Great job getting that foot down. And it wasn't just the passing game working for Mizzou today. Here, Larry Roundtree. Punches it in from two yards, caps off a 14-play, 98-yard drive for Mizzou. Tigers up 14-0. to zero. Running backs even good through the air. Here Locke finds an open-ish witter. Touchdown catch, but also Locke's 57th touchdown pass, which moves him into second all-time ahead of Brad Smith. Only Chase Daniel left to beat. Welcome back, everyone. We will have the Play of the Week nominees in just a moment. But first, other high school sports for you. The softball and baseball fall seasons are really winding down almost if you can believe that already but a couple of teams used uh, one of their last games for a good cause KOMUH Aaron Reynolds reports how two teams from Glasgow rallied the community to raise money for a local cancer center along with the usual black and gold there was pink everywhere at Gold Star Park in Glasgow Missouri Tuesday night the teams hosted their annual pink out game to raise awareness and funds for a local cancer center it gives the kids some fun to look forward to, some fun for them to do. It makes them aware that life isn't always a bed of roses. Um, cancer affects everybody. And for one of the players, it has affected her quite a bit. My grandpa actually passed away from cancer, so it's like really impacted on me. Monning said she was excited for the pink out game in particular because it allows the community to come together to support a good cause. Money is raised through t-shirt sales and a raffle. The proceeds will benefit Fitzgibbon Cancer Center in Marshall, Missouri. Because I do think it gives the kids something fun to look forward to. And it gives the teams in the Booster Club to give back to the community that gives so much to our school. Aaron Reynolds, KOMU8 Sports, Glasgow. After last week's demolition of Florida, it's clear the Missouri Tigers offense has dramatically improved the last five weeks. But just to prove it, let's do some math. The first four games of the year, the Tigers were scoring 25 points a game. Through their last five, they're scoring 45. On average, that's 20 more points a game, and those 20 points could make a big difference in tonight's game. Back here in mid-Missouri, the rainy cold weather might have canceled some of your plans, but it didn't cancel the Class 4 football state semifinal. Tigers taking on the number 23 West Virginia Mountaineers and the ship. Stay tuned for Sports Extra with Jim Reek tonight. Chris Rubino is actually down in Orlando covering the basketball game. Jim will have a score update and highlights from the game in that show. It's been a big weekend for Mizzou sports. From football's battle line victory over Arkansas to basketball's Advocare Invitational push without Michael Porter Jr. And Mizzou volleyball looked to contribute with its regular season finale against the number three Florida Gators earlier today. Senior day at the Hearn Center. Five seniors would be honored today. And Carrie Larson was one of them. She gets off to a strong start with her first of eight kills. Tigers take the first set, but differently than you may expect. Florida draws a blocking penalty right here that gives Mizzou the opening set by a score of 25 to 23. Second set, Tigers once had a seven point lead, but Florida erases that deficit. Carly Snyder's block helps the Gators to set point. But next play, Tigers set up a kill for Melanie Crow. She led the team with 
17. Mizzou and Florida would go back and forth in their second set tiebreaker, but the Gators take the second set 29 to 27, and Florida rolls to a three sets to one victory. From there, the Tigers finish the regular season with 20 wins. Mizzou will know their NCAA fate by tomorrow night. Final day of the Hawkeye Challenge for the Missouri women's basketball team. Yesterday, the Tigers lost a close one, 79-76, to the Western Kentucky Lady Hilltoppers. Today, they're facing off against the Quinnipiac Bobcats, and Missouri gets their first win of the season, beating Quinnipiac by double digits, 66-51. The Tigers got a huge boost from the three-point line. And that only begins the excitement that took place around the SEC today. Let's take a look at some of the other games from around the conference. First, Mississippi State hosting UMass, and no one expected this to be close except maybe the Minutemen. Many of you have probably taken in some sort of 5K training, but what about 50K training? KOMU8's Aaron Reynolds tells us about a mid-Missouri mom who takes running to the next level. I really am addicted to the trail because it's like you're just in another world and you're able to just kind of let everything go. A couple of miles is nothing compared to the distances Kristen Walls runs. She takes marathons to the next level, racing in ultra marathons, which typically range anywhere from 50 kilometers to races that take multiple days to complete. I used to think people were crazy, like, you're doing what? But then once you start doing it, and it's just, I don't know, it's just a crazy thing that takes over. It truly is. It's a lot of preparation. It's not just showing up on race day and saying, I'm going to run 50 miles. It's, it's months of preparing. But Walls says it's the mental barriers that are the hardest to overcome. When you start to feel good in a race, you need to kind of be mindful um, not to get ahead of yourself. Because I think as a runner, sometimes these long distances, you can let your mind take over. Your body's going to start to hurt. That's just inevitable. So I think being mentally prepared is probably my biggest key. Best running partners ever right here. And it's her family that helps her keep that mentality. But it was emotional to see my family there and to see how helpful and I think uh, intrigued my boys were with what I was doing. And they really kind of took ownership of it. Um, and I, th I think it, it was just a proud moment as a mother to have my boys there. I've tried to never let it interfere with our family. So summertime is challenging when the boys are home. I don't want them to feel like, oh, mom's gone for five or six hours. I try to do it when they're at school. Some people may look at it as narcissistic that I spend that much time, but I feel like I'm blessed with a capable body and I want to use it to the fullest potential. Coming off a of bye week, the Kansas City Chiefs would look to regroup Sunday after dropping three of their past four games. No score in the first quarter, but here was one play that nearly broke it open. Eli Manning tosses it to Shane Vereen. He looks for the trick play pass, but it's intercepted by Daniel Sorensen. He brings it up about 20 yards. In the second quarter, Giants find a little more luck. Orlean Starkwell finds the handoff for a one-yard touchdown. New York missed the extra point, but they take a 6-0 lead. Fourth quarter with one field goal, Harrison Butker collects another. This time he ties the game at 6, and the rookie would be called upon once again. This time he forces overtime with just seconds left on the clock. Butker matches the Chiefs' record with 22 consecutive field goals. The kicking came would prove big in overtime, but this time the Giants win it on a 23-yard field goal. Chiefs fall in overtime 12-9. Despite the loss, Kansas City still leads their division by two games. And that's all for sports.